Oh, you're talking to me? Well, hello to you too then, stranger. <laughs> Forgive me. I'm not used to people coming up to me. Especially not ones that are this attractive. <clears throat> Anyways, you're not from around here, are you? Otherwise, I'm sure I would have noticed you before. And, uh, no offense, but you don't really fit in with the crowd. The folks here tend to have some unique qualities. Very much stayed in themselves. They can sense an outsider from miles away, so you best be careful. Oh, so this is your hometown. I see. After fleeing the nest, you've come back for a brief visit? Somebody your age won't fit much around these parts. Everyone ends up moving to the bigger cities once they're old enough. And only come back every now and then. Well... That's the fate of a small town. But I think the people here like it that way. Nothing changes, and the elders still get to set the rules. It stays quiet, homogenous, and nobody cares to speak up against the choices made. Most rural towns share a similar mindset in that regard. They prefer their secluded community and keep things as they are. Humans tend to be terrified of change after all. Always have been. Funny, isn't it? How people like to think they've gotten so far. Developed and incorporated so many new things into society. But still. Deep down it's exactly the same being. Driven by the same motivators. Sharing the same fears. People like to consider themselves complex. I suppose they are in some ways. But how deep do you have to dig to find the same core within everyone? The same urges, needs and desires. The yearning for love, for approval. Their hunger and thirst, their fear and confidence. Still, they're so quick to judge, to ignore somebody in need because they don't deem that person worthy of help. <laughs> because surely if they'd worked harder, if they'd been better, they wouldn't be in such a bad situation, would they? Oddly enough, some use that same metric for themselves too. Maybe they want to believe that their life is fair. That people get what they deserve. And that in the end, there will be some kind of reward or punishment for their behavior. Randomness is a terrifying thought, isn't it? The idea that nothing actually matters. It's much easier to believe that there is a reason, a good and a bad. A choice that makes a difference. People need that, in a way. Because it wouldn't be fair to see evil succeed. To see a good person struggle. What would be the point of being good in a world like that? What would be the point in trying? <sighs> Humanity is truly fascinating. So simplistic, yet so complicated. In a way, they remind me of ants. Hustling and bustling all about, each trying to contribute to the colony whilst attempting to keep themselves alive. They fear to look further than the comfort of their home, the warmth of their familiarity. But sometimes, they get lost. They need one another, but hunger and the yearning for more 
drives them out into the wilderness where they can't care for themselves anymore. Where they end up being exposed to the elements, to predators, all alone with no sense of self. Or perhaps if they get lucky, they stumble into a new colony. I suppose everyone is searching for something, ants and humans alike. But the question is, what? How about you, stranger? What is it you're looking to find? You too appear a bit lost within yourself, as though you don't really know what it is you want. It's clear you're craving something. Company, perhaps? Love? Greatness? A distraction? Punishment? When you think about it, how many others might feel exactly the way you do? People always seem to think their struggles are unique, as though nobody would ever be able to understand them. <laughs> you wouldn't believe just how many have had near identical experiences. The same feeling of lacking something. The same words of discouragement whispered in their head. The same nightmares keeping them awake. Humans are quite interesting creatures. Somehow they're all so similar and yet they all are entirely different. Though perhaps they're not as unique as they'd like to think. After all, they carry near all of their ancestors within them, in one way or another. Not only in appearance, many behaviors are learned too, so perhaps without even realizing it, they laugh their way their great-great-grandmother did, or hold a pen the way a distant relative in the 19th century used to. Your preferences, your taste, the way you see the world, the way you walk, the way you dress, your favorite scent, your hair color and texture, even every single cone and speck within your eyes. All of those things aren't uniquely yours. And if you were introduced to every person in your bloodline, you'd be surprised just how many of your traits you would find mirrored in others. Still, there's probably nobody who is exactly like you. Is that what makes you different? The fact that others only have a piece of the beautiful puzzle that you are? Or does it make you less unique, since you are just a composition of everyone who ever came before you. If you think about it, your entire being is a story. A love letter to people long gone. Or perhaps a biography of pain and mistreatment. You might never know. All those memories are lost, after all. And there is no way of retrieving them. We don't have the ability to go back in time and see for ourselves. To ask those who have passed. That kind of power is not for us. And even if it was, people might only abuse it. On a similar note though, I wonder, if you were a god, 
What would you do with that influence? Would you destroy what is left of humanity? Would you try and guide them towards a better world? Or would you simply watch, study them, see what they come up with on their own, and just how much of their success and failures they attribute to you? Would you play favorites, rile them up against one another, have them fight for your entertainment? Or would you end world hunger and bring peace? upon humanity. <sighs> Silly little hypothetical. But you'd be surprised how many different answers I've gotten. Perhaps it says something about how you grow up, or about your own desires. Maybe it's a reflection of what you believe you deserve, or how you see those around you. Your empathy, your deepest fears, your strongest emotions. Especially since you aren't partaking, merely an observer able to influence outcomes and probabilities. Give blessings and curse those you deem unworthy. A strange thought, isn't it? An uncomfortable thing to consider. It raises the question of how much control a god would have how much free will a person is really given. People like to think their thoughts and choices are their own, that they have control over what they do. But I suppose we may never know for sure. I am beginning to like you, stranger. You have an honest stance that most others lack. You believe in the good in people, and maybe that's why you came to me. Because you think you can fix whatever it is you deem broken. Or perhaps my uh, mystery caught your attention. I don't think I am fixable anymore. Though I have to admit the company is nice. I tend to spend most nights alone. I have for a very long time. Always a stranger, hopping from one town to the next. Never quite fitting anywhere. But I've never dared to move to a bigger city. They tend to be too much for me. Too many irritating lights and colors and smells and noises. All of that. <laughs> and I'd miss being able to see the night sky. The stars still give me a sense of comfort. A feeling of belonging that I've never felt anywhere else. <sighs> I'm not sure why I'm telling you all this, to be honest. I guess that's just what happens when you approach a lonely drunk. They talk. A tradition that has been upheld for centuries, but in the end, it doesn't matter what I tell you. You too will forget about me, eventually. Whether that be tomorrow or in a year, 
I'll mean nothing in the trajectory of your life. And the next time you visit, I'll probably be gone already. Because somebody like me can only ever stay for so long without being noticed. And an outsider will only be tolerated for a certain amount of time. I suppose, in a way, I am running from myself. Still seeking the comfort of people. Attempting to escape the loneliness. Even though I never quite managed to find that. You've been the first person to talk to me in many years. And I'd like to thank you for that. I don't understand why you do it, but... Not many souls have your purity and curiosity. In a way, you remind me of somebody. Your presence feels vaguely familiar. Like the melody of a song I had almost forgotten. Ah, forget I said anything. Some things are best left in the past, don't you agree? You know, we're not so different, you and I. I guess I've become just another person. A simple being yearning for approval. For the company of another soul. Even if they don't understand. It's difficult. But I imagine you know the feeling as well as I. In the end... Even a fallen god is nothing but another human, for the most part. Enough of that, though. I'd rather not take up any more of your time. You have so little. Make it count, stranger. You might just be able to do something with it. Thank you so much to Pandora Heart as well as all the other Patreons that have decided to support me. Thank you for being the motivation that keeps me going.